This is one of Russia's biggest submarines. The Delta IV is more than twice as long as the world's largest passenger airplane, and it can carry missiles weighing up to 185,000 pounds. It can even break through thick sea ice that's taller than a person. The submarine is part of Russia's growing arsenal of Arctic weapons and vessels, which includes a fleet of massive ships that can crush ice. But why is Putin flexing his muscle in the North Pole? We decoded Russia's latest activity in the Arctic, its growing bases, and weapons to find out. Russia stages some of its Arctic naval exercises in its France Joseph Land archipelago. It's a cluster of 192 islands spread over 6,200 square miles. That's about the size of Connecticut. Temperatures hover at around negative 8 degrees Fahrenheit. Russia held a high-tech training in March 2021. This was the first time the country surfaced three submarines at the same time. Two Delta IVs and one Bory-class submarine, which was introduced in 2013. These are called hydroplanes, attached to the fin. They typically lay horizontally, but these are specially designed to rotate vertically to help surface through ice. A standard sub can break through three feet of ice cover, but these shattered over five feet. And that's a big deal because submarines need to break the ice to launch missiles or communicate. The Russian government says it even tested firing a torpedo from under the ice. We could not find footage of it, but this Maxar satellite image shows a hole supposedly caused by the launch. No independent journalists were allowed at the exercise, and all footage was distributed by the Russian Defense Ministry. Russia's northern fleet also carried out exercises on land. The Arctic Brigade uses these Ruslan vehicles, which can carry up to 22 people. They have four sets of tracks, each independently powered to help navigate harsh Arctic terrain. These polar suits are designed to blend in with the snow, and they carry AK-74 machine guns. Russia developed them as an answer to America's M16 after a few were seized during the Vietnam War. The fleet also has at least 30 A1 snowmobiles. They're specially designed to carry a grenade launcher, machine gun, rifle, and two pairs of skis. The fleet also has the T-72, a battle tank from the Soviet era used to fire shells that can destroy other tanks. Their cache of weapons includes this BM-21 Grad multiple rocket launcher. It can fire 40 rockets in just 20 seconds, leaving the adversary no time to take shelter. There's also this coastal defense missile system. Some of these Onyx missiles can target ships nearly 200 miles away. For the very first time, Russia also flew its MiG-31 fighter jets over the North Pole. They have the ability to strike a moving target and can reach over 67,000 feet. That's nearly twice the cruising altitude of a commercial airplane. You can see they also refueled mid-flight, which is hard to do. Magnetic fields at the North Pole make navigating over it especially challenging for pilots. New or old, a lot of the equipment has clear displays of patriotism, like Russia's Red Star, a communist symbol first used by the Red Army during World War I. The flags of the Russian Navy were clearly visible on all submarines. And the bases are painted in the country's national colors, white, red, and blue. President Vladimir Putin claimed the 2021 exercise was a huge success. But why is Russia's military so active in the Arctic? Experts say it's designed to send a message to the West, that the Russian military is strong and willing to act. But there's another more strategic reason. As Arctic ice melts, it's opening up new opportunities. The region is believed to hold almost a quarter of the world's untapped oil and gas, valued at about $30 trillion. And the five countries that surround the Arctic have the most to gain. That's Norway, Denmark, Canada, the United States, and Russia, which by far occupies the longest stretch, with 53% of the entire Arctic coastline. 
the UN gives each of them economic rights, over a 200-mile zone around the north of their coastlines. But there are legal ways of going beyond these limits. In 2007, Russia planted its flag on the seabed of the North Pole. Many saw it as the country symbolically staking its claim over the region. Reports project that control over the Arctic's resources would give Russia economic stability. Currently, oil and gas account for roughly 60% of Russia's export revenue and 30% of its federal budget. And experts say that's why Russia is expanding its military bases here. This one is located on Russia's Kotelny Island. It's called Severny Klever, Russian for Northern Clover. It refers to the design that makes it easier for soldiers to reach its sprawling facilities without walking outside. It stocks enough food and fuel to house 250 personnel for an entire year. The base also has a recreational center with a Russian pool table, ping pong, and even a workout area. Just 1,200 miles away from Severny Klever is another base. This one is called Arktichesky Trelisnik, Russian for Arctic trefoil, which refers to the three pods extending from the central atrium. This one is the administration center, this is the medical and rec center, and this is the cafeteria. Personnel live inside the star-shaped structure. It's located 600 miles south of the North Pole, on an island called Alexandra Land, and it's built to look like a spaceship. The stilts help it withstand snow. The base covers 150,000 square feet, about three times the size of a football field. There's even a small chapel outside. This landing strip dates back to the Cold War, but satellite images show it's been extended. Now it's the only one in the Arctic that can accommodate all types of aircraft. From here, Russia could protect the Kola Peninsula, which is home to the majority of Russia's naval nuclear arsenal. But foreign policy experts believe the base is also strategically positioned at the western end of an international waterway called the Northern Sea Route. The route stretches from the Bering Strait to the Kara Gates along Russia's Arctic coast and cuts travel time for ships going from Asia to Europe in half compared to the Suez Canal. Russia has utilized it for centuries to deliver food and other supplies to residents who live along its Arctic coastline. But experts say using it more regularly would result in heavy environmental damage. Today, thinning sea ice is making the waterway easier to navigate, and the route has been gaining international attention, especially after the Ever Given got stuck in the Suez Canal in March. In 2020, shipping traffic through the Russian Arctic rose by about 50%, but it amounts to only 3% of the traffic that goes through the Suez Canal. Putin has said he even sees control of the Northern Sea Route as a huge economic opportunity for Russia. As a result, the country has developed a massive fleet of icebreaker ships to access the route year-round. Right now, it has about 50, and it's building more. The Arctica is Russia's newest icebreaker. It's thought to be the biggest and strongest ever built. It's 567 feet long, 112 feet wide, and about as tall as a 15-story building. Some point out the beam is designed to make it appear even larger. Here's how it works. Icebreakers have rounded bows, unlike regular ships, which have straight hulls to cut through waves. This allows them to ride up onto the ice and use their weight to crush it from above. Experts estimate the Arctica can crush about 10 vertical feet of ice. But Russia is the only country with icebreaker ships that are nuclear powered, which means they run on uranium and can go as long as seven years without refueling. It's a major advantage out in remote Arctic waters. Today, Russia uses its icebreakers to clear the way for cargo ships and military vessels, and to access natural resources. The US, on the other hand, has only one icebreaker that compares in size to Russia's larger ships, and it was built during the Cold War. It's used for science and research purposes. But at the end of last year, the Polar Star set sail for the Arctic in its first non-scientific mission since 1994. The U.S. Coast Guard said it would help protect U.S. stakes in the region. Russia is closely monitoring the route, 
It requires all ships passing through to get permission from the Russian government and to have a Russian pilot on board. Now, foreign policy experts argue an icebreaker fleet is essential to maintaining international access to Arctic waters. The U.S. is now building up its fleet and expects to have its first new ship by 2024. Even China, which doesn't have any territory in the Arctic, has two of its own. And some say this is just the beginning of a race to control one of the last remote spots on the planet.